being, uh, what is that? March 6th, Wednesday, March 6th, call the Oxford Planning Board Subcommittee to order. Uh, present is Town Planner Eric. Building Inspector Patrick and Selectman John Yule. I didn't remember that. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right, so that's where do we end up? We're on an end. And yeah, consultant review the, fees and procedures. procedures. Right. Yeah, I think this is where we end up. If we didn't end up here, we'd finish this and decide we don't make any changes. Although, yeah, well, let's start with that anyway. And if nothing else, it's a slight refresher for where we ended up. Uh, Rosemary, I think this is pretty standard from what we've had. The procedures haven't changed. No, I'm just curious about the planning board and or DPW may require the applicant to fund a non-site peer review. Uh, and or? Yeah, why? I think that would be our department, right? That's, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. Like, do we need the DPW part in there? We could change it to planning board. Um, and by a, by a recommendation of the DPW, or I don't know, we'll just leave it playing board. And if the DPW know, wants to recommend good. something to us, then we'll, then we'll do that. Yeah. Right? But I know with past projects, DPW, when they, you know, when they send notes or memos, they say, yeah, we're, um, Isn't that part of the peer review? We'll get kind of got the yeah, so we'll, horse here. But we'll still get the peer review. That's what I'm saying. That's where they we'll would get, participate. We'll that get point. commissioner review, or not commissioner, uh, department re reviews also. And they'll write in there, you know, when I send it out, I'll send it to say, hey, this is going for peer review. Right. And, you know, we'll, we may have further comments and or adjustments based upon that that needs to be reviewed at another time. Um, it just seems odd that in a subdivision, DPW may require, I mean, I guess because of a new road, maybe? Well, maybe the grades, the slow pitch, stuff yeah. like that, usually sidewalk pitch, um, uh, storm drains, culverts. Um, oh, yeah. Sometimes they want to look at that stuff. Not not sure. to this is the design phase, or what are we at? No, we're not even that no, peer review no, yet. No, this, this is procedures. It's just procedures. Yeah. That's why I said we're kind of got This whole section ourselves. is uh, administration. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. So I guess it's, you know, it's down below on A. It says project to be reviewed by the DPW. So right. Yeah. You know. So the initial should be through the planning board, and then the DPW would follow. I think we can get rid of that. Planning board may require blah blah blah. The need for con on site construction peer review. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking of Kathy Way. The town has uh, hired graves to do. Um, Peer review during the construction of, but DPW didn't request that. That was done by the planning board. I think just the planning board is fine, personally. Anybody have an objection? No, at this point, because then, then, then it would follow the DPW after that. Right. Right. So this is just to re may require right. may require the applicant yeah, to do a peer review. Peer review. So to assist, to assist in the review of the construction phase of the project. Right. And then during the project, part A there, 
Well, I guess because it's during the construction phase, DPW may request that, but I would think that request would go through the planning board. I mean, I, I thought that we would have it in the, uh, in the approval of the, the board is going to have a peer review watching the construction or the DPW always will watch the construction. Right. And, and that is in case the DPW doesn't have the people to do it, they'll hire a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so right. we, so maybe we maybe could say the planning board at the recommendation of the DPW may require. I think that might be better. Or was well, that, was that pigeonhole us into not just requiring it anyway? You can say pigeon as a pigeon. The well, planning board sir. may require, then we're good. Yeah. Because if, if it comes from DPW, if DPW says, hey, we can't inspect this on a regular basis, right? we need to have a peer review consultant, and they write that in a memo that goes to the planning board, the planning, the planning board says, hey, we want you to have peer review for during the construction phase. Right. And we should add it's that. Basically that, came right. through DPW, but I think that follows along with, you know, shall be determined in one of the following ways during project review by DPW. Right. I think that would cover. So you're saying leave it in there? No, I'm saying take it out. Yeah. Unless you see there's a reason. Well, the planning board or the DPW may require the applicant to fund an on-site, on-site peer review consultant to assist in the review of the construction phase of the project. Right. Okay. Right. So during <coughs> construction. Yeah. Right. So to have somebody on, obviously on site. Like Graves does for, like is doing it for Yeah. Yeah. And Which I think is part of our process. It, anyway. was, it was part of the approval process. Yeah. Yeah. But we're just saying that we might, we might use that. You know, we might not, but we might. The so. need for an on-site construction peer review shall be determined in one of the following ways. Project review. By the DPW. Right. So DPW looks at a subdivision and says, hey, there's no way that we can do all the inspections necessary in this to ensure that the road is built to be town standards, to ensure the drainage is installed, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. They would send a memo to the planning board right. and say, you know, here's our issues with the project. We think that during the construction phase, blah, 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 we can't inspect, blah, blah, blah. We would recommend peer review. Yeah, then. Okay. And then for a planning board vote, that would be probably what we would normally do. Yep. Planning board amendment. Mm -hmm. Violations. Do the violations. No. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we can get rid of it. And I think so, right? Rid of you for sure. Yeah. And then. This, that's interesting, this last, the third of public safety I get, but the well-being of the flutters within 300 feet of the project boundaries. That's kind of fun. Well, if something happens with uh, erosion control or, you know, and, right, and, that, yeah. and that comes to comes to light, the blood is bringing up and then we have to, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Business practices to contract peer review. Yep. Wait a minute, did that? All right. Planning board shall use. Oh. Oh. No, no. Go away. Planning board shall use best practices to, con to contact a peer review consultant with the needed, with the needed using a specific. Does that mean? Is that English? Mm. With the needed. Using a specific detailed scope of work. I think the contact appears peer review consultant just using a specific detail. As long as like there's a missing word needed credentials for specific detailed scope, whatever that consultant so that's is. That's like drainage. necessary necessary um, 
you know, credentials or certifications. Right. Um, yeah, they're specific, right? Should there be a comma after consultant? Yeah. Okay. Because so. right. you're separating out that phrase with the necessary credentials. Okay. It's kind of 6-1-F, doesn't it? I mean, English really wasn't my thing back in high school. It wasn't mine either. It wasn't mine ever. Yeah, I don't get it. Does that comma look right to you? Are you, are you an English guy? I can do comma belongs, yeah. Okay. okay. Here we go. Two to one. John? John? Yeah, yes. I think the luck's there. Oh, I already put it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John put it in his. It's I put it in. He's mine. got the official though. 93 went to Oxford High School. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I went to a much worse high school. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I went to a Jesuit high school. It should be that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, that. I don't think we need their approval on the, well, um, to the applicant. On the scope of the applicant for the review of the applicant and or developer. So for the, the determined scope over to the applicant for review and approval. I think for review, period. I think both. It's our scope of work that we're, these are things that the town is concerned about, not you know, the can have to it, agree. It, yeah. Right. Yeah, but I, I don't. I would say approval. I would maybe say and, and sign off. Mm. It's a. Well, I, mean, I guess you could say for approval, and if they it's don't it, approve I mean, it, then. If they don't approve it, I go to plan guess. B. I don't know what that is. And get another. Consultant, or okay, what shall flow with the determined the determined scope of work? Yeah, yeah. Is that like a? Are they are they looking? Are they talking like prior to a prior to contacting the consultant? No, after. Okay, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. I get it. Typically, when yeah. we do it, the. Scope of no, work for a project right. is, you know, we call up Graves and say, hey, we want a, a full zoning review, or right. we're looking for a review of construction of roadways, utility installation, and um, stormwater. Right. But that would be our detailed scope of work, and then they would come back and say, you know, we all inspect every three months or two months during the construction phase. You know, look at blah, that. blah, blah. I think that might be okay. It probably is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably okay.
make sure we get enough money. Yeah. Yeah, if they're insufficient, blah, blah, blah. And that happens. We've had that happen several times. to move on to O? Yeah, because that D looks fine as far as, I think so. if yeah. you have a, an addendum to the scope of work and then the fees, you know, work stops until we get the additional funds. That's yeah. I mean, our, our pre-reviewers is set to a contract if the scope of work exceeds the exceeds contract, that's then right. we need to do an addendum to the contract. That's, right. I think that's all standard general mm -hmm. language. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Changes, alterations. Citing mass statutes here as to what a minor change is, I guess, if I'm reading this right. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the statute. Well, it's that anything that's not a change follows under the subdivision. Yeah. Well, but that's, minor. That's what that is. Yeah, a minor definitive subdivision will be something that we would be writing a new section for. To be yeah, what's mine. Yeah, yeah, what's mine? Um, yeah, we need to determine that later. Um, I mean, I think this is a good section. I had a mm -hmm. guy years ago. Um, absolutely ripped, came into my office and said, they're not building what they said they were going to build in this subdivision. What are you talking about? Pulled out a set of plans for the subdivision and threw it down and said, this lot right here, this house is not in this location. It's 10 feet over this way and it's, a, it's not shaped like this and it's not. It's a, well, that's not minor. 100% that's minor. <laughs> I mean, it's, it was still within the setbacks. It's still met. I mean, this was a you know, four acre lot. Oh. And the house plucked right, you know, they showed the house right in the middle and they moved it over 10 feet one direction. And instead of it being a colonial, they were building like a Victorian or something like that. And the, oh, well. The house is just like a, like a, yeah, like a yeah, 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 you have a box. Right, you have a box, right. Here's a box. box. Does it fit within the setbacks? Yeah. Showing that, yes, we can build a house yeah. and septic and right. well, if necessary, and whatever. Yeah. But, you know, once we explained that to this guy, he was like, oh. <coughs> I thought they had to build that. Specifically, that particular so, yeah. structure at that, yeah. Yeah. No. No, no. They, I mean, they have to file it anyway. It's just giving us a copy of the of what's filed for 21 days. That might even be like a state law. Or even be one of those. I mean, Sub 
I, I'm fine. I don't that. care. I think yeah. it's fine to keep yeah. it. The problem is that they don't record. That's the problem. Well, they if they, if they if, you know, failure to makes the, the decision null and void, so. And then it's not illegal. No, not illegal. I guess the only, that's where it comes into where somebody goes in for a subdivision lot on a new subdivision. You, you don't issue the building permit right. until after yeah. we have confirmation that everything's been recorded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Approval to not make a street a public way. So what yeah. makes it a public street then? What, how does it turn into a public street? So there's a street acceptance so procedure. Okay. Um, we have a whole manual on it. May need some updating also, but at the very least it's, it's there. Um, approval not required. So On an A and R. No, 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 no. I don't like waivers, but I really don't like the A and R process. You hate A and R more than you hate waivers? I don't know. It's a toss up. I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, so this is the endorsement of approval not required. Zoning bylaw was adopted. The original, yeah, it was uh, nineteen. I think it was nineteen. I don't know, nineteen fifty something. The original, yeah, oh, it's right. in the fifties. I, uh, I think that'd be pretty cool to yeah. put it right in there. Yeah, right. yeah I mean, it was pretty useful. Well, it's. To the adoption of subdivision control law. So it's not it's not the zoning bylaw. It's the when did we no. accept the subdivision control law, which might have been around the same time. We build, no, I think we're talking about A and R, which is referring to the building. But it's talking about an existing building within the uh, building exists on a parcel of land that was constructed before the enact enactment of subdivision control law. This type of provision of land shall be exempt from the requirements. Parcel of land that was constructed before the enactment of the subdivision. So I think these are the um, preliminary, definitive, minor, definitive, and whatever that one is. Uh, maybe design requirements or something like that. Am I confused? This is very old. I found this, by the way. 
problems here, but this is all. Oxid subdivision control, rules and regulations. Oh, this is 1973. The bylaws. There you go. 1967. Special town meeting, November 20th. For zoning or for building work? bylaws? This is uh, building bylaws. Is that saying the zoning bylaws? There's more to that, too. There's some of the There's a couple of things in there. Is you know, this is subdivision here. Subdivision control rules and regulations. Let's see. Well, if you're, you're going to grandfather people in, you need a date certain. Yeah, this what, is 81473. But. Are you young? Oh. Buildings out there that are over 100 years old. So this is 81. There's a sedition, 78. I want to say it's a city of 1573, but. That sounds potentially correct. So I, I may, uh, I haven't read this section in a while. What am I, um, this is referring to the A&R A &R plan. Right? Yeah, right. With an existing building on it. Is this like an 81L situation? So if they have an existing lot with a building on it, no. and you want to subdivide it. Right. This could be like uh, right. 2 Wade Street, which had the two two buildings on right. it. Right, that's an 81L. Right? Two buildings on one lot. Yeah. Prior. Did they say they were prior to zoning? No. No, no there wasn't prior to zoning because it was done in this. It was in the 60s. Right, so they, went, they had to go for a variance. They did. They went for the variance for the lot size and everything else, and then they came to you guys for an A&R. Okay, so what, they didn't get any kind of waiver then. They still came before us for the planning board. Right. And we didn't, um, I'm just confused by the section. Did, yeah, this, it, it's a bizarre section. I, I don't really know. Highlight it with a question mark and some research. Someone's going to have to do some research yeah. as to the dates. Existing building expression. Uh, yeah, we'll look back into that and yeah. see what this MGL section is and everything else. So, yeah. Okay. Upon determining. Uh, uh, And without public hearing, endorse their own word. So I think public that's hearing. standard language, right? Yep. Yeah. That's, yeah. Required filing fees been paid. Perfect. Should we say that the shall not commence until all all required documents are submitted and filing fee well, paid? Let's just talk about fees specifically. Oh, okay. My so side. documents for review. Um, one form with original copies and one paper copy. There's the sheet sets. That's the submittal package? Yeah. Following. One form. Okay, yeah. One paper. One paper copy. Checklist. Then paper copy. One full size. Eight. Did we change that? Okay, did we just change these? 
Yeah, well, these were updated. These were all changed, yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll just match this with number 33. I just went up 33. Whatever it is, all will yeah. change it to match. Yeah. And you're going to include like a digital version also? Yep, yeah. so that's down here. One yeah. electronic copy of all paper documents, blah, blah, blah. Email too. Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Here, then in the email you get that also, you get mm -hmm. the email. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, I, that, I think that's a better way to do it than to send it to me, like my email address in there. I mean, if I leave, that means you have to update the things on all public here and blah, blah, blah. Land like management, it's going to go to whomever your planner may be, or, or at least the. Does anybody there. else but the planner check I the do. land management? Yeah, we do. Yeah, well, it's, it's automatic. automatic. It, it's automatic. It's it's so Patrick, right. myself, Stephanie. Um, okay. I don't know who else gets it. At least the three of us get it. Um, the electronic documents, one electron, electronic copy of all paper documents within one business day after submission. Why is that? Why do Why do they get one business I day? I don't know why they would get. Yeah, I think. Are they talking know. about like a PDF of the signed plan? No, nope. they're talking about just the submission. Yeah, we don't. We don't want. We don't need. This. Everything should be. Should all be at uh, the same yeah. all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we can in the PDF for that. Um, Things above. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it, it is the same thing. I think it is. It's looking. Form A. It's this. So it's the, the deed. Yeah, this is that a deed may be required, to, that it's signed by all uh, uh, applicants. The planning board might require a D. Yeah, sometimes they do. What? Sometimes. I think Wade Street, they gave us that too. Wait, too full. I think they gave us The CBA gets a copy of the D yeah. for every parcel. The planning board never gets a copy of a D. Why would we want it? I don't know. I don't want a D. And quite honestly, I would look that up anyway. I would, you know, if I have some question, you know, if Who owns Patrick it? submits an A and R for. John's lot. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go check the deed to see that he has some sort of authorization. If he doesn't have authorization, then I'm going to say, hey, you know, John's the owner of this parcel. I need you to. No, you just have the owner sign the Form A. Right. Well, that's what I mean. But if they don't, if he, if he signed the Form A, then you don't let him. He only the have the owner sign the Form A. I understand that. But if he submits it saying, no, I'm the owner, and there's no question on that. 
What about deed restrictions? I mean, when I bought my piece of property, our butters and everything, but there's deed restrictions on our property. It's about what we can have, what we can do. Yeah, that's not. Uh, that's not. That's not, not I mean, that, what could impact easements. whatever we're doing. That's easements of the surveyor. So that's yeah, yeah, all of that should be on there. I mean, so I mean, that would be a reason to look at the deed. On it, it would be, but the deed restrictions should be there was that should be the prop the. Um, your engineer should be looking at those and note any sort of deed restrictions. Right. Right. Um, okay. And failure to do so huh. is disaster. Yeah, I don't. Um, but it's not on the. I guess it could be an appeal, but. It's may require. I don't think it's bad to leave that in there. I don't. I don't see a harm in leaving it in there, but yes, that's why you have staff, and the staff's going to go look at that anyway. If, if there's anything in question. I mean, if you say owner's signature and somebody fakes the owner's signature, that's. It's not up to us to, no, to no, control no. that. If you want to be signed, no. But if, if Patrick signs for John's lot and he says, "Oh, I, I just purchased this," well, I might go look for a deed in which he had purchased it. Yeah. Because our assessing data is not always 100. percent You know, if he bought it on Tuesday and comes in on a Wednesday with this plan, you know, our data is not going to be up to date at that, you know, that fast. Uh, yeah, it just—it's unusual. Yeah, I think, especially because you're right. You guys don't get them. I mean, if you if you're if you don't believe the guy signing as the owner, I mean, I, do we people are gonna what? What if he is the owner, and then you you're you're checking him and doing this other stuff, yeah, and then I mean, you piss him off, and yeah, but I'm not gonna go to his face and be like, I don't think you're the owner of this parcel. Blah blah blah. Oh, okay, you know, I would go and check online because it's, you know, I looked on, you know, with, you just got to be careful. Yeah. I mean, I might, but it wouldn't be a, hey, oh, I, see, I, a, I noticed that John is listed as the owner according yeah. to our records. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just bought it, you know, okay, well, you know, can you give me a copy of the deed or right. give me authorization that, you know, you have some sort of interest in this property. Sometimes they don't update the record for like two years, sometimes in cities, it's yeah. like two years for Oh, yeah. Then they help update that information. Is it correct or wrong? Gotcha. Yeah. Copies of covers of, of form, form one. one. That should be form A. Should be form A. Let me change that. Should this be just copies of Form A? Copies of covers. What? I don't know. I don't read that. That, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Wait. Yet. It's asking for the copies of the covers of Form one. A. A and R. I just want to start it. Okay, sorry. Copies of covers of Form, form A, A and R application submitted. What? I'm, I'm just. Okay, these might be, this might be something that Framingham has. They may have a Form 1 and a Form 2. We may not need that. So, what is the all? Let's just try to clarify it. So, when you submit an A and R, you submit, you submit the plans, mm -hmm. you submit your Form A. And you submit your check. I mean, right? It doesn't. Nothing it else. seems like we might be a little too. Just the further up to the form one, one form further. Yeah, that might that might be a. Uh, 
We should also have the applicant if it's different. I don't why. I never understood why. So if, again, if if Patrick is going to buy um, your lot yep. that you have, right, and he's going to do an A and R mm -hmm. on that, I would have you sign as the owner. But I would have Patrick also sign as the applicant, so that. Or have the owner write a letter saying, you know, I give permission for Patrick to represent me as he is purchasing one, two, three. So why seven, don't we just three. cut out the middleman with that letter and just say owner signs? We do have the well, I mean, our no, just property. only the owner. Okay, so that's just it's the owner's property. He should sign. He or she should sign it. Right, because. The reason you have them is you worry about the applicant and they're for applicant trying to pull it fast. Could an applicant be the surveyor too, though? The applicant could be the surveyor. Yeah. It's but more important to have the owner's signature, I agree. But the whole point is we have both. But the whole point is I think we should. But the, the whole top of the form has the applicant's information. Yeah. So. I just don't. I know that's what all, most towns do, right? But but then most towns are worried that oh you can't have the mylar because you can't record it until you know we don't want the owner stealing this land by recording a mylar that the owner didn't want because sometimes it's just the applicant. But yeah, I can go oh, applicant yeah. applicant submit an A and R plan and record it the next day, hmm. and it means nothing until the owner does something. But a lot of planning boards try to try to not have you do that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the owner didn't know about it. Right. But if we have both on there, I think it's, it doesn't hurt to have both. Yeah. As long as the owner signs. Right. If you want to have the applicant, that's awesome. But the owner should definitely be one of the signatures. Right. Yep. So we have, we have okay. So are we going to get rid of B? Everyone? Yeah. I think so. Agree with that? Yeah. So newbie, plan of plan for the approval, written narrative or summary. Again. We don't actually request a narrative on here, nor do we have a space for it. No, but we have um, we have a note in there about that so location slash description. Yeah, but we also have, don't we have a, don't we also say somewhere that the planning board recommends at, that, that representative, that be, a representative be at the meeting? Mm -hmm. I mean, we could, we could, we could have them put, a lot of towns have the, uh, <laughs> the reason for endorsing, the reason for the plan, mm -hmm. and the purpose of this plan is to, I mean, we could do that. Add that yeah, so that would be the, the narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm mean, fine with leaving that in there. Well, maybe I, I would. 
you know what? I would I would put it. I might even take that out, and when we get to the the requirements of the plan, that we put it in there, that they they put the narrative right on the plan. The purpose of this plan is to create two lots from the plan, you know, or whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, then you got it on the plan. Yeah. You don't have a piece of paper in some file cabinet that eventually gets uh, stored over at some garage somewhere. Might be ten years old. Then you can find it again. So that's my thought. Have you been downstairs? That's what I meant. <laughs> that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I think you're right. If we can put that on the, right on the plan. Right. Yeah, it should be part of the summary of the proposed division. Yep. Yeah, so I'm going to copy that out. So we can delete it from here. Yeah. Right. But what if they want to just send us a written? No, we want it on the plan. We're on the plan. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I think that's. I think One stop right. shopping. I think it's better on the plan. Plain board it rolls it out. What are the, why, are the, why are they doing this right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think you know, having it right on the plan. Then it's recorded also. So they can't come back and yeah. say, oh, I know we split this off, but instead of combining it with X lot, you know, we're going to build a house on it instead. Mm -hmm. So we need a frontage or whatever. You know, we're going to get a variance for it yeah. and, and build on it. This just kind of pushes people into doing a little pre planning. Yep. Oh, let's for reviews for this damn. Did we skip that one? No. Well, oh, yes, yeah. We're going to book a list of known variances granted by the ZBA or the decisions. Should we get Yeah, I think that's. We should know that. That might. That should probably be another on the plan thing. What the variances? Yeah. What the variances? Variances noted on plan. Who we'll finds the variances? Well, they so should be recorded. The applicant. The applicant will have to do it. They, they, they I mean, I think that's part of the, part of the problem is that not all variances are have been recorded. Not that they're supposed to be, but they're not all recorded. Not all special other decisions, permits, special permits, etc. They just don't get recorded. Yeah, sometimes. I, mean, I found this a lot in, in Southbridge in the like in the 80s and early 90s to mid 90s. The attorneys were telling people, "Yeah, don't don't file on the don't file a decision on the land records." Why? Yeah, yeah. And you want? Oh, no, I did. You have a couple here, right? I wasn't there. Special permit. They were recorded from that. Wow. But I I don't think it's a bad thing to have it listed on. I don't think it is either. If it's not recorded, then whatever. At least it was saying here it is. But how would they necessarily, they wouldn't necessarily know. I don't know if it's. I mean, if you got a variance on your lot, you sell to Patrick, Patrick sells to John, John says, hey, I'm going to do an A&R. He may not have a clue that there was you know, a variance done. Might be impossible. So you can leave it on there. I think leaving it on here and just yeah. getting that list included yeah. is, is not. Gotcha. This is, I think, standard. Uh, this is an A and R plan, right? Yep. So you should take that professional engineer off. Take that out. It should not be or. No. So it should just yeah, you're right. The days of engineers staying from survey plans are over. <laughs> they are. They are. They're supposed to be. Yeah. They're supposed to be. Yeah, I've seen. I that see done. that a lot in a lot of companies. I've seen that now. Professional engineer is a professional staying plan. What community is that? Oh, I see. I see it here too. I have planned no, what? <laughs> so, well, so what? So you need a survey plan? Yes. Yeah. I had a plan. What? I had an argument with the guy up on something. Yeah. He wants to give us plans uh, for the house location, and it was sent by the civil engineer. I'm like, no, 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 we answer that. Oh wait, no, no, no. It was. It's a proposed plan. Right? Was it proposed? It wasn't an A&R. It was an A&R. I mean, they can do that. They can stamp that plan. 
they just show they they would just they show the boundary with a proposed house on it. You do setback. You, setbacks. Yeah, you could stamp that. Hey. Proposed plan. You're not cre it wasn't creating any boundaries. Yes, it's like a final as The final as Yeah, but that's but he didn't change any boundaries. No, 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 but the distance. Oh, the, so uh, the okay. Oh, an as yeah. right. Yeah. That should have a that should have a survey or stamp sure. on that. I had an engineer revise a plan without the knowledge of a surveyor, changed lines and everything, and then, see that and then resubmitted it with the engine, with the surveyor stand. <laughs> and it's a He doesn't work in that plan anymore. So I'm not, I said the stand would go to any handwritten on it. Yeah. And then it's handwritten on it. So the more you speak in, the more. That covers all the surveys. Usually you guys are all good, so. Because usually you don't have a problem with pools. Usually the pools. Someone wants to put a pool in. Right. That's usually the bigger. Yeah, that's too good. When I put mine in, I just pull the pool up and they just draw it on there. Yeah, and then they put it in and it's on the neighbor's name. When I put mine in, I had a good, I had the library survey and everything, so the setbacks were there and all the structure was there. So I had power coming do the whole thing. Cost me a couple hundred bucks. No, cost me about, I got a couple hundred, about 1200 at <laughs> the time. Yeah, and I've got that, and that's all filed and stamped, and that's then before I can pull the permit. Yeah. Okay, so. In our plan of land requirements, here is where we want to put in this. Yeah, someplace in here. I'm, I'm just going to scroll down real quick just to see if it's. Any plan where the plan would do it necessary to so serve the purpose and to. What if I add it here? Do we just want to say a yeah, we want to change that. summary? No, just a uh, a Remember? note. A note shall be added to the plan. What is the summarizing the purpose of it? Or okay. this is all. Summarizing the proposed division of land. The the. Summarizing the purpose of uh, uh, the proposed division of land. Right. So we don't need existing yeah. conditions, right? Hmm? We don't care about existing conditions. No. But. Okay, so let's. Let's back. say a note should be added. A note summarizing. Yeah, this is the plan requirements, so. Right. Let's say. We have to say added to the yeah, plan. Yeah, no, nope. this is what is on the so a plan of land submitted for determination that approval is not required shall contain the following. Okay. All right. So property address, assessor's parcel, north point, date of survey, scale. Record owners of land. They don't like the 500 foot scale. They like a larger scale than that.
that's just me. What was that? I don't like the 500 foot for the locust. I like the larger, you know, 1,000, 2,000 feet. I think, yeah, 1,000 could be nice. Okay. Yeah, we could have. Locust. We had a, uh, we had, um, I don't think you were here. We had a company bring in an A and R plan, right? And the locust map, it was a circle, right? And inside the circle, all it was was it just showed the boundary of the lot. And it said the street name. That's it. There was no, no. I think there was a height or something. No, no, there was nothing else. It was no other streets. Yeah. And, um, what are they doing that for? It was just. And I said to the board, like, what? You can see what's around it. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was, it was, it was, I laughed. Probably shouldn't have laughed at a public meeting, but it was just like. So we want to go from to 500 to 1,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Names of butters, yeah. Show the butters real quick, so okay. Right away, right? What do you mean the pavement with? What do you like the pavement with? And the extent of the pavement. It's like your driveway. So your driveway goes into the right away. So yep. that sort of the driveways will go in. So you have that apron to go in mm -hmm. from the right away. I'd like to see because we have you know, the center line of the road is always nice to have too, because we have one zoning district, they measure the frontage uh, setback from the center mm -hmm. of the road. And you don't really get that a lot. I don't know, that's a it's not, it's not all the time. But. It's not consistent with any community? But no, you don't get too much of that. Um, you mean the showing the center line of the road? Yeah. Well, busy. that's not always easy in, unless you have a subdivision road that's 50 feet wide. Right. But if you're on a, right. the back roads, how do you how do you determine the middle? Like Route 20, I think the setback from the center, or which side, you know, west, west or east. It would be the center of the right away, so if the right away is on her feet, you take 50 feet from the edge, and that's where you start your But that's not well, I just wonder because of the uh, 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 setbacks that come to, to mind. It, that would impact my setback. Well, if right. I measure from the property line or from measure, measure from the center of the road. That's something that right. we should look at. We're having that problem over there because you have to move all the signs, the road signs, yeah. Yeah. and that, and that's the expansion of the, the project. Wait, is it so safe from the center line? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Now some of these signs yeah. get too close but to what? the I don't the remember what zone it is, but they're too close to the zone in time that's just it's well, route, uh, route fifty six, I think. I mean I, I remember when I built my yeah. pool house I had a it, it changed the front of side back. No. I had to move the pool like one downsize the pool house and move it closer yeah, because mm -hmm. it went from twenty five to fifty feet. But so was that measured from my property line or was it measured from the center of the road? It depends what what zone you live in. R two. So that might be from the from the that's, property, that's probably property, property line. Yeah. Well, that's what we did. So I mean, but yeah. you know, I'm yeah, that's that's exactly it. Is the you know the one that says from the center line. Well, if you have a variable width on your road, yeah, you know, for my lot, it might be no, the right way might be said. 50 feet, so it's 25 feet plus whatever. Yeah, you know, Patrick's lot, the, the width of the road might be 40 feet, so it's only 20 feet plus whatever. Yeah, that's where it comes. That's it's from the property line. Is is the safe? It's cleaner land. Yeah, much cleaner. But that's in the zoning bylaw. I think we'll look at 
the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Yeah. Then, then, you, then you're. Yeah. So yeah. I, I did have right away here, name and width of the street right away, which would be the entirety of not just the pavement, but the. And the extent of the paved improvements within the right way. I mean, I think we just say, could say just within. Let's just say right away. Smile, you're on TV. No, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Anyway, it's a good leave it. Yeah. It's consistent. Motion position, proposed boundary lines, dimensions of lot areas. I don't know all lots to which the land relates. These are all these are all fairly standard. It's easier to just look at it. Thank you very much. Reference to the front area. So we see it read the whole thing. So that would be in the, the remaining land. Yeah. Right. So the remaining land, you want to make sure that you see the frontage of the remaining land. And the, although, I mean, I guess in some cases it's not really practical if you've got a thousand feet of frontage and I want to cut off you know, 200 feet to cut out a lot. Where you just put a note on there, mm -hmm. remaining French. Yeah. Um, but it says reference, so it doesn't have to be necessarily shown on the drawing of the plan. Now, or you could do Oxford doesn't allow you to have, it has to be continued in front, right? Yes, continuous. So should we say, it doesn't have to be continuous. Get a corner line. I like to make maybe one. I worked out of town that didn't have that. What's that? I worked out of town that didn't have that. We had had this lot in A. In front, he was cutting a lot out for guy owns this lot, cut a lot out for his kid behind his. So he had frontage, the existing house with the appropriate frontage and then the rest of the frontage for this house that was put in the back we did it we we agonized over it my entire staff and at the end we got a look at it doesn't say we can't do it but this is the last time we, did it. And we made a change after yeah. so I just got one recommendation mm -hmm. on this one on 10 oh, yeah on 10 mm -hmm. well, well it's somewhere in there so how about them on the on the A and R put the existing setback for the zoning at this time? So setback, lot area, the zone R, you know, it might be R two R one, whatever the zone is. But how about the setback requirements? For so here we have an area. Um, existing dimensions, boundary area. lines, dimensions, and area. So let's just add Oops. in here. We don't. We don't. Re, we don't require setbacks on our subdivision areas of all lots in which the plan right. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. So they already have the lot area. Right. Dimension, boundary line. So the only thing I can think of where that yeah. wouldn't just 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 oh, that where you wouldn't necessarily put that is in a situation where I have yeah, I know. 10 acres and I'm going to give two acres or I'm going to give half an acre or whatever because of an encroachment to my neighbor. I guess on the new lot though because it's going to be combined up there. Because okay. you don't want to, because I see they, if you make a mistake Sorry. and so they, they, they cut a lot and then they are how do you know that the existing lot still maintains the still house. maintains? Yeah. You know, did they did they make that non-conforming? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're right. You're right. Did they make it non-conforming because right. it's confusing. You really got to look at it to make sure. Sometimes I don't even see these, mm -hmm. so it gets recorded, and then right, you know, down the road they want to build a new home on the new 
parcel they made. Right. And what they did is they went and turned and made the existing, existing non conforming. Non -conforming. Yeah. yeah. Now what do you do? Well, now it's, okay. a, it's a paperwork nightmare. We have so much time to, to enforce that. And then said so they turn around and sold that law. It's even worse. Right. Yeah, you're and right. Five, ten years go by. And they're looking at going, hey, your garage is non conforming. Non conforming. You got to go for. I, well, depending on the time, if it's more than 10 years, if it's been there for more than 10 years since the division, you're out of luck. But you're right in that in that case. We want, but we want you're right. We want to catch it before it goes, before it's endorsed. So that that kind of a change. Is that, is that within the purview of a PNR plan? I don't know. To include setbacks? No, to to try to make sure that the lights go on. Yeah? Yep. You sure? But it is every two years, so when I did it last year, I would do it. Yeah, I mean, I think I in. His lot was surveyed, his neighbor's lot was surveyed. It was all part of a subdivision. And when they were laying out the lots, they missed a boundary marker. So. Instead of this guy's lot being a rectangle, it was like a triangle. And he and the neighbor were working out, okay, well, my garage is over the line, or his garage is over the line, his shed's over the line, my garage is over the line, his shed's over the line, so we're going to make these funky lots. And I was looking, okay, well, okay, but the setback is this. So give yourself from the edge of the structure to the setback, and that's the area that you're going to you're going to give to your neighbor and that you're going to take from your neighbor. Mm -hmm. and it took a while for me to go over this with them. Oh, okay. You know. But it was all had to do with setbacks so that you don't, you don't file an A&R with an encroachment and then have you know, Patrick come in and say, well, what about that's not allowed. This has happened. This has happened. Yeah. And we do say that you need to show all buildings, right? Put structures. All existing structures. structures. So we add structures in there, right? Yeah. And Dimension set that structures and area of all lots to which the plan relates. That's basically. Okay. I think that's where your variances and things would come into play. So if you look at if somebody comes in with a, an A and R to split um, one lot into two non-conforming lots, let's say, yeah. they already went to or one non-conforming lot into two or whatever it is, but they went to ZBA, so Wade Street, two Wade Street. Yeah, non-conforming lot with two structures on it. Yeah. So they applied for the for the variance. Right for the frontage and, and to do the split, then went to you guys for the A and R. But did they say split. it? But they, I don't think they said it right on the plan. They just came in and said, hey, we got a variance. I'd rather have that on the plan. I would too, is that? I no, that's that's what that would be, that's what that would imply. It's almost as, as this plus. I think you yeah, almost I, could just yeah. say additional inf information deemed necessary yeah. instead of all of, all of that. Um, well, maybe 
Yeah. Or we leave it for tonight. And, uh, I'm just thinking. Well, that, that'll get it. That, that seems to be. All right, motion major. Huh? Let that look at it. I almost think just go to this and just make that additional information deemed necessary for the board to make the determination of approval. Mm -hmm. and this this first part is the hang up. So you say any additional information? Yeah. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Should we put like uh, like a comma example zoning board of appeals? Yeah. Um, yeah, just to kind of see what what we're talking about. Decisions. And what else would it, what else would affect the, an A and R plan besides the ZBA? I can't really think of anything. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot to be combined with. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be in there. That's going to be in there anyway. Yeah. We'll just put comma, et cetera, and let them figure out. We're good, you want to Yeah, I think that's good. to be I've always been told that it's not our job to enforce the zoning bylaw right on an a and plan yeah. we do it because we try to help people right but we're, I think we're really supposed to be looking at frontage and access for an a and plan oh. if you look at I know shall appear on the plan stating the purpose of the a and <laughs> So, so do we get rid of this? I would say yes. Four kids. Yeah. Which one worded under yours? Or I think that's a tell me statement. I like mine. Uh, uh, I mean, look, one's going. No, so. no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, new lots on the plan should be shown in a different color. Uh, I would say we specify that color. I don't think we need. I don't think we need to say color. I'd rather have no color. Yeah, but you don't want to say delineated or homeline. Shall be highlighted to. Shall be delineated to uh, a distinguished whatever. Distinguished. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So that the like the option, uh, option of saying. This thick bold line is the new lot, or this red line is the new lot. And yeah, very rarely do you see a color on an A&R plan. I started seeing more um, just as I was in Southbridge, and then the board was questioning, you know, not one of the members of the board was an engineer or very firm. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to let you file this, and they never had an issue with filing it. So it depends on what day you're going to file things. That's like true. Free. That is very true. Sometimes the stuff that goes through there. I, uh, I had to go four times just to get one thing done. It wasn't even my thing. I was doing a favor for a coworker. Planning board signature block, which is almost the same as this. But whatever. Provide the regular factor for each new lot in the plan. The number shall be shown. Uh, I hate that regular. Right Why? Right Why? Right right we have it out of zone. I know. I think we should take it out of the zone. No. We should no. have something different like that. I think it's terrible. 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 Because if you've got a bunch of, if you have a long, <clears throat> funky lot, yeah. your R factor is like two. Mm -hmm. Or point two. I guess it's good for like large 
but mm -hmm. well, it's a large lot where you get into trouble. But when we do the zoning, we, I want to like reward it. Though. It's just a little bit easier for yeah, of course, so that to us. do the math. We That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah, but the way it's worded, most towns do like floor area ratio. Or we'll talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll isn't, talk about that isn't our isn't our regularity factor just sixteen times the area divided by the perimeter square? <coughs> I don't think so. I think it is sixteen. I think I think I was actually on the board when Joe Zanetti instituted that, and a lot of towns around us use it. Maybe we can continue. I'll find. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant for tonight. I don't know who uses it, but um, Douglas uses it. Sutton, do you want to be like Douglas? Huh? Do you want to be like that? Well, we had it before Douglas, so Douglas is like a. Yeah. Go off topic, but yeah. Sixteen times the area divided by the perimeter square. Easy. Right. So I've seen some surveyors give us stuff. I try to do their math and kind of figure out and I want other towns to check this. I'm not, I'm not joking. I want the other towns to figure out how to do, how to figure it out to make sure their architecture is correct. But now I know who to go. Yeah, so it's just the area in square feet. Now the area has to be in square feet. So it's 16 times the area in square feet divided by the perimeter. Add up all the dimensions around it, squared. And that's your R factor. Would it be better enough for Easy. area ratio? Or we slower area ratio. Well, or or a uh, percentage of lot area. A lot most uh, most times do percentage of lot area. So your lot coverage, rather than having an R factor, is you know if, if your minimum lot size is one acre, yeah. you can develop twenty five percent with a previous coverage. That, that's what they do. That's all they use. They don't use, they don't use an R factor. Yeah, but that doesn't stop people from having their crappy, yeah. crappy shaped rat tail. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the whole purpose of that. So we'll not have that. But we have other language in there that says that you know, your width should not be you know, shorter than the required blah, blah, blah. Your furniture has to be so wide, too. That's right. the other thing. You know, yeah. 150. So you can go from like 150, narrow down to 50 feet, right? And then go for 100 feet, and then open up, and you know something's 400 feet wide. You could have just just 50 and do the the rear lot thing with a big, you know, large enough lot. I think we'll go over it with zoning later. It's going to kind of be one meeting in the entire for the. Oh yeah, to go over that. Yeah, get the R factors to figure that. If we want, if there's going to be changes around what we're going to do, that and the dimensional requirements, is, right? Yeah. Anyway, but for now, fine. It's in there. I remember when Joe was on the, doing the engineering. All our lots that were in the rural areas where there was no where you were well and sewer, uh, there was septic. There was no sewer, no water. Everything had to be one one acre, and it had to be have 150 feet of frontage. That right. But that's as far as you went. Yeah. That was Oxford. When was that? Back in the I want to say back in the eighties. I don't want to say uh, eighty three, eighty two. Joe, who? Joe Zanesky. No, he didn't. He didn't start till. I know, but he late late eighties. He early changed 90s. it so that it was one. It became one fifty, and he changed the setbacks. I remember because I was dealing with him at the time. So I think it was changed in eighty seven. It was in eighty seven. That's what it was. Eighty seven. Yeah, That's he, it. He wasn't here yet for that. It was, a, it was a, like a major. Option. It was a major. So the zoning, zoning change. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Eighty-seven. That might have been Joe D. Virgilio. It could have been. He was the Joe before the Joe. Before the upgrading, upgrading Joe. <laughs> but it was it. You're right, Pat. It was eighty-seven. That's what it was. <laughs> a little history for you, Aaron. Yeah. I wasn't handy until we got well, I know I ran into some of these things back then in '87, so you know, trying to stay. So for right. now, we'll ultimately okay. Location descriptions, all existing buildings, and about ground structures. Okay, well, we put it there. 
Yeah. 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 We're pretty good then. We're ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to leave it up on that one line or? No, I think here yeah, would be a better description of buildings because it's that's more than you know. Yeah. So it would be labeled as shed, pool house, structures, garage, barn, house. You know. You want to change buildings to structures? Yeah, pools and structure. And ground. Yes. I'm just using that because that's what we're I think. Do we need this and above ground structures? So just be all existing structures, period. Period. Yeah. So you want them to show the septic system, septic tanks and D boxes and I would not consider those structures necessarily. It may be further down. Although you may want that on a plan. What you can do is an A and R and throw us the oh, you know, throw the lot line right through the middle of the you know what we should field. do. You know what we should do. Well. Yeah. We should put a note on put an ad that um, where possible the existing septic systems shall be shown on the plan. A budding structure. A budding septic system shall be shown on the plan. That's been my biggest beef. And the well too. And the well too. Because we, I, my neighbor had a failed septic system, and they put it in the reserve area, and it encroached on the well on the on the, on the rear property. So it was within that zoning that reserve area was le less than 100 feet from his well now. Right. And not knowing that, not hearing that on the plan. Do you want to add that as a new thing or location description of all existing structures and, and add it to this? Surface. Subsurface. Subsurface. Yeah. Subsurface. Sewage disposal system. Yeah, something like that. Subsurface, yeah. Because um, that's the entire. Yeah. Or not, that's the entire. Big word. Uh, All right. So I think that's the like if, if the land surveyor, if the land surveyor says, well, you know, we think there are wells here, we think there are septics there on the neighboring property, but what we're subdividing is all on, uh, or what we're A and R, or whatever, dividing. Well, this might be for that case where you're changing a boundary line and well, you have a house on an existing lot, and you're putting a new boundary, so you want to see that stuff. Yeah. To try to, you know, stop that. Not really with the abutters. And, but, you know. And you even, even the new lot you're creating. You're well, I guess the house and the well and the septic there. Yeah. Right. Like John was saying, if the neighbor's well, this was if 200 feet from the house, and that was going to be the new house is going to be 50 feet. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Fly, it's not so okay. So I think it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're not catching that now. No, we're not. Guardrails. 
trails for information. There's three monuments must be shown. Oh, can you change that description of all property monuments instead of bounds? Yes. and proposed property monument. Because sometimes you might show an iron pipe to be set or mm -hmm. something like that. Stone in the wall. <laughs> yeah. I love those. Stone. Existing yeah. and proposed. Yeah, my, my deed says the corner of my lot is an eight inch cherry tree. Yeah. <laughs> I have a couple of stone monuments. Yeah. How big is it now? It doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I had that line we surveyed because uh, I don't see an eight inch cherry tree. I don't see a cherry tree, and it's 30 years later. I had all my restaked when I did put the pool in, so I have all the pipes. <laughs> That's good. Is this a proposed property line? Fences, walls, blah, blah, blah. At least three. Yeah, that is, a, that is a registered land surveyor rule when you draw your plan. What? You have to show three monuments on the plans to help you re to help the next guy to coordinate. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I also ha I don't have. I guess with the, the, I mean or triangulate, I should say. Okay, that's fine. I have I have another thing I want to add. I don't have it today, but I want to put in a note where um, like two monuments need to be defined um, on the current date of eighty eighty three. The North American data of 1983. Mm -hmm. That way, that helps also to reproduce your property lines. If, if something happens to all your monuments, or you try to find one, you know you can use those. You have a starting point to drag Use those coordinates to lock right down. You know. Yeah, because all all the work we do, where I work, um, every job we do now is all NAD 83. You know what I mean? So, yes, the, uh, that's the new changes that are going to be. Huh? When that changes to 2009 or whatever. <laughs> I, don't, just, I don't think it's going to be that big of a change. So, no, I don't think it's going to be From 29 to 83, it was a big change. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're not using any 29 coordinates to find an 83 point. Is that the same? So that compliance with zoning and other regulations is neither. Is that the same note that we read above? Or yes, but one was saying that. It no, not that. No, not that. It's up here. <laughs> Someplace. No. No, I think it was part of the, the list that we were just going through. So. Uh, I don't think so. I think it was. Take a brief recess. Go on the I think it was up for there. Really? Yeah. I think that was. Yes. 
That's your right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. What's that? Hold oh, on. We're getting close. Nope, you go. the same? Yeah, see that's different. You can't have them different. Yeah, so why do we have this at all? I don't know. Like, we've already said all those things. Right. Delete. Right? Yeah, I agree. New lots, all the main structures. And here is where we should put something, that, in this section is where we should put up something with the, the data, the NAD 83. Now, I think any plan, that, any plan any A and R plan should have that data. Okay, that's fine. That's I'm confused by this though, for the creation of new lots only. Is that what? Why is there a subsection for <laughs> your? I should it's pretty much what you're doing. Your, yeah, yeah an, AR, an, AR, an AR plan is also always creating new lots. Why Not always. Well, what? Not always. Well, new parcels or lots, whatever you want to call it. No, sometimes it's I'm. I'm taking two acres of your property and adding it to mine. It's not a new lot. But you're creating there. a new lot by dividing that lot. You're creating you're a new creating lot. Two. Right, creating two I'm lots. taking one lot. I'm taking two lots and changing the shape of the two lots. Right, so not creating not, a new lot. It's not technically the new. creating a new not lot. Not the same the new. Not technically the same as I have a thousand feet of road front and I'm your A for A and R plan is showing through here. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you've got a thousand feet of frontage and you're and you're gonna and you're cutting off hundred foot lots and say that that's the requirement, mm -hmm. that's a new lot. But you know, adding on to or or subtracting from isn't necessarily creating a new lot. It's creating a new lot shape, new regulatory factor, new blah blah blah, but it doesn't so other than that, other than all that, it's the same lot. Yeah. Oh. Still has the same zoning. It still has the same uh, map and lot. Mm. And they says it's that just changing. It's changing the lot. It's not changing. Yeah. It's not creating a new map and lot parcel, whatever you want to call it, with a, with a new address and a new. Okay. But I yes, I'm still confused by that section. I'm not, I'm not not confused, um, you know, it, it, it also is, seems, I think that when I'm looking at that, <clears throat> the old man made fresh the significant features such as steam buildings, that's all already in our above part, right? Yeah. Yep. But I the sidewalks, I the think I in there, stone walls, guardrails, rock, blah, 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 all of this stuff. Yeah. I think There's I almost one. want to add that location <laughs> of all wetlands mass GIS wetlands that can be, I think that'd be a cool thing to add to. It might be like something to look at and go, oh, we're creating a lot over here. We're subdividing this lot, but this whole lot is all wetlands, so it's useless. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. the wetlands go right up to the new boundary line. Mm -hmm. Right. That's I think we should add, I think we should get rid of that 22. And add this. And, and add that up to the 
to a new section, um, a new. Uh, yeah.